Hi, my name's Dave Fountain and I was a teacher for 27 years. As a child, my passion was puzzle solving um, and I got a dream job. I was teaching maths and then IT and I loved it. Anything to do with puzzles, games, etc. Brilliant, really absorbing. When I stopped working, I realized that the teacher's pension is uh, an incredibly complex and quite intricate puzzle of itself. And unfortunately, it's one that I'd neglected to pay any attention to. And for me, it was too late. I have lost about £2,000 a year that I could have got if I paid attention much earlier in my career. Now, I don't blame myself for that. We all know how absorbing teaching is. Um, that puzzle of trying to make quadratic equations very appealing to a year nine on a Friday afternoon tends to suck all your spare time out of the day when you're planning and preparing. So you don't always have enough time left over to look at the things that concern yourself. So that's why I started doing these videos to help teachers understand how to get the best out of their pensions. Now I've called this session Snakes Alive after that traditional bingo call 55 Snakes Alive. I'm not a great uh, bingo fan. Um, it's not the kind of puzzle I really enjoy. Um, I find it a little bit too uh, straightforward. Um, not that the teacher's pension is straightforward. Um, now at the moment you can take your pensions from 55 and now I say at the moment because the government has said that the minimum age is going to change uh, and the one date we have been given is that in 2028 it will have risen to 67. What is planned is that access to pensions will be linked to the state pension and the earliest you can take it is 10 years before your state pension age. So currently state pension age is 65 and 10 years before that is 55. Snakes alive, 55. Now, there are currently three pension schemes for teachers with three different normal pension ages. Do not confuse that with the state pension age. The first for teachers who were in the scheme prior to 2007 is the final salary scheme, scream, the final salary scheme that you can take it's in full at 60. 60 is the normal pension age. And before you get too excited, no, you cannot take it at 50. Um, the state pension age for those teachers is still 65, and so the earliest you can take it is still 55. The second, the second is for teachers who joined the scheme between 2007 and March 2012. It's a different final salary scheme that can be taken in full at 65, and you can still take that at the earliest at 55. The third, the final teacher scheme is for those who joined after April 2012 is the career average scheme and it can be taken in full at your state pension age but you can take it 10 years before that date. Of course that does depend on your state pension age and how old you are now. For instance my state pension age is 67 so I can get my hands on it when I reach 57. Now there are a couple of points to mention here both of which I have or intend doing other videos on Firstly, is that if you're in the scheme before April 2012, then you will have a mixture of two schemes, or possibly even three. This was deemed to be illegal because of the age discrimination, and you are going to be allowed to choose which scheme your service from 2015 up to 2022 will be treated as. Now that's a big topic on its own, so I'll be doing other videos on that later. The second point, is if you take your pension up to 10 years early, there is an adjustment made as to how much you will get. Whether you get more or less, gain or lose, is again another topic of one of my other videos. So if you're worried about that, please do take a look. It's not as bad as it first appears. But what I want to look in this session at is whether you can use a private pension in addition, not instead of, but in addition to your teacher's pension to bridge the gap between when you can start to take money out of pensions and when you want your teacher's pension to start. Uh, now, no matter which way you look at it, you need to be able to pay the bills. And if you don't have any income, you need to have savings that you can use instead. So the question then is how to build up your savings to the point where they will cover all of your bills for several years. Now, I'm not gonna tell you this is easy, just that it may be possible. So first, how much do you need to survive a year? 
Work that out, and once you have that figure, you have a target for how much you need to save. If it's 15,000 a year, and you need five years, that's 75,000 pounds. If you need to cover a gap of 10 years, then that's 150,000 pounds. Wow, those are big numbers, and that's without a rainy day fund. Okay, now I'm gonna move out of my comfort zone here, um, because what I've made a bit of a mission of mine is to become an expert on the teacher's pension scheme. And this is outside that into private pension schemes. And I will emphasize here that I am not a financial advisor. And, and so this is just one of a range of options that I've looked at. Um, but I do strongly recommend that you get professional advice from a registered independent financial advisor. The main advantage as I see it with private pensions is that you get tax relief. For a basic rate taxpayer, that is 20%, and it makes even more sense for a higher tax rate payer who's paying 40%. So looking at those figures I had from the last slide, 75 to 150, I'm gonna set my target as a nice round 100,000 pounds. As a basic rate taxpayer, that will cost me 80,000 pounds. The other 20,000 is money that I would have lost anyway to the tax man. And if you are lucky enough to be a higher tax rate payer, then it actually only costs you 60,000 with the tax man throwing in the 40,000 he would have claimed off you for the tax. Now there are limits to how much you can put into your pension each year. And those limits do include your teacher's pensions contributions. So you will need to plan ahead by several years. You can't simply go and put 100,000 pounds in one go. The limits at the moment are 100% of your salary or 40,000 pounds, whichever is lower. The rules change when you start to take money out of your pension. So if you start accessing money from your private pension pot, instead of being able to put in 40,000, the limit drops to just 4,000. And I'll come on to the reasons for that later. Now we come to the important end of the scheme, getting the money back out again. And this is where the tax break can have a really positive impact. The tax situation is a bit like having a tax time machine. What you're aiming to do is to move money from the years where you would have been taxed on all of that money to years where you possibly may not pay any tax at all. This is because each year you have a personal allowance that currently is 12,500 pounds. When you are working, you're hopefully over that figure and so a lot of your income is taxed. When you take money out, this is the, the other bonus you get from take, putting in a private pension, is you're allowed to take up to 25% of it as a tax-free lump sum. So in addition to your personal allowance, you can take out a big chunk tax-free no matter what other income you have. Now, there are different ways to get your money out of a private pension. I'm just gonna look at two of them, the fixed term annuity and the flexible drawdown. And this is an area where I said, I'm out of my comfort zone, possibly something you'll need to talk to a professional about. Um, but these are the two that I've, I've looked at and I'm gonna cover. Now, I am not a financial advisor. So before you go ahead with any of these, do speak to a professional. Laws do change, as do tax rules, um, and getting professional advice at the time you're doing it is always going to be a good idea. So, with my pension fund of 100,000 and needing the money to cover five years, these are two of the ways it can be done. A fixed term annuity is something you buy from a company. You give them all your money now and they give you it back over a fixed number of years. Because you give it all to them at the start, they will give you back more than you gave them. However, a five year period is not very long, so don't expect to get much more than you actually gave them at the start. With the flexible drawdown, you take out money each year, or not, hence the name being flexible. The remaining money stays in the pension fund. So to last five years, we're talking about taking out 20,000 each year. Both allow you, both allow you to take up to 25% tax-free. Where they differ is that the annuity allows you to take out 25% of the whole fund at the very start. So 
from my hundred thousand pounds you can get your hands on twenty five thousand at the very start now that's useful particularly useful if you have a big project to start or want to get rid of an outstanding mortgage there's one other reason that I'll come on to a bit later then each year the remaining amounts are paid out and this is where the tax time machine is really kicking into gear remember that when you put money in you would have already been charged tax on all of it now you've already got a large chunk of it out tax-free and each year you get to use your tax-free allowance in year one if it was this year that tax-free allowance is twelve thousand five hundred pounds so that fifteen thousand pound payment from your pension only has tax charged on just two thousand five hundred that's a tax bill of just five hundred pounds compare that to the tax you would have paid on it if it had been fully taxed as part of your salary that's three thousand pounds so instantly you've just saved yourself two thousand five hundred and you will do that for the next four years oh and don't forget the tax free lump sum you got at the start in other words in the total over the five years you get back seventeen thousand five hundred pounds that otherwise would have gone to the tax authorities unlike the annuity the flexible drawdown you don't get 25 percent of the whole fund at the start instead you get 25 percent of each withdrawal so if you take out twenty thousand in year one five thousand pounds of it is tax free the 15,000 will be taxed. So that's exactly like the annuity. You get to use your personal allowance this year on that 15,000. And so you're still only paying 500 pounds tax. By the time you get to the end of the five years, you've saved exactly the same amount from the tax man as you would have done with the annuity. However, what you don't get is any extra because you haven't given all the money to the company to pay them out over those five years. But what you do have is your money gets stayed invested in whatever pension funds you've got. And I'm sure you've all heard that pension funds can go up and go down. Um, so it depends on what you're invested in. And again, that's one for your financial advisor to talk with you. The one advantage the flexible drawdown path has over the annuity is the ability to change how much you withdraw. If you were to work one year and not need to take out quite as much, you could leave it and take it out a year later when you're not working. Similarly, if there was an emergency and you needed an extra 10,000 pounds suddenly, you could draw that out. The one thing to be careful of there is to watch out about the tax. If you draw it out too much in just the one tax year, you could end up with a very big tax bill. If you took out all the 100,000, over half of that would be taxed at 40%. That's a lot to lose, especially when you consider you putting it in only saved you 20%. So just be careful how much you take out in one year. So let's summarize a few points. With regard to the tax-free element, the annuity lets you take out 25% of the whole investment at the start, useful if you want to pay off a large amount uh, or start a project. The flexible drawdown lets you take out 25% each time. In both schemes, the total you get is essentially the same. But there is one particular consequence to do with the lump sum, something called pension recycling. If your lump sums are over 7,500, you can fall foul of a, a tax rule that stops people putting money back into pensions. Um, I'll come back to that on the next slide. The next point is about how much you can get. When you come to buy an annuity, you can shop around. And because there are a number of companies who want your cash now, you'll find they're willing to offer you more in total over the five years than you give them now. Just bear in mind that five years, not that long a term for investment, and so you're not going to get a substantial amount extra. You can also choose different types of annuity. Some will pay the same figure, a set amount each year, and others will increase the payments each year by either a set percentage or inflation. Um, but if they do that, they're going to give you a lower amount at the start. If you choose the flexible drawdown plan, then the money you don't take out stays in the plan, can go up, can go down. Um, again, as I said previously, talk to your financial advisor about that one. Once you've picked your annuity, the payments each year are fixed. You won't be able to alter them and you no longer have access to the money that you paid the company for the annuity. So that £100,000 you did have saved is, is gone. You're getting it back bit by bit, but you can't suddenly go and get another, another 10000 out of that account. 
Um, with the flexible drawdown, you can change how much or little you take out each year. Just be aware of the tax rules that I mentioned. And finally, for this section, don't forget you can do a bit of both. You can use some of your pension pot to put into a flexible drawdown account and you can buy an annuity with the rest. Definitely one which you're going to need to seek professional advice about. Now, back to some of the other consequences of taking your money out of your pension scheme, no matter which method you use. Before you start taking money out of a money pot private pension, the, there are some consequences. Up until then, you've been allowed to put in up to £40,000 a year, or 100% of your salary if that was lower. Once you start taking money out, the amount you can put in drops to just 4000 a year. This is to stop something called pension recycling, where you take money out of a pension that's already had its tax refunded and put it back in and claim another load of tax refund. It sounds too good to be true, uh, and it is, so rules exist to prevent it happening, or actually to stop it happening to excess. There are six tests to determine if someone is actually recycling their pension and all six of those have to be met. One of the main rules applies to the tax-free lump sums that you receive from your pension pot. If the lump sum is under 7,500, then you don't fall foul of the test. And so there's no problem recycling money into another pension. That applies every 12 months. Looking back at the annuity option, which I've just put on the screen, you can see this could be a problem in the first year. That 25,000 lump sum is well over that 7,500 pounds limit. Compare that to the flexible withdrawal option. In this case, there's no problem because each year only 5,000 pounds has been taken out as a tax-free lump sum. Though you would have to keep an eye on this and be careful. If there was a need to take out a larger amount, like we said, that emergency, you could easily push the tax-free amount over that 7,500 pound limit. Also, if you took out one amount and then didn't quite wait the full 12 months before taking out the second amount, you could end up with £10,000, say, being taken out as a tax-free lump sum in that same 12-month period. This is something where if you're planning to take out larger sums each year, that the annuity route could well be better because if you take out all that lump sum on the first day, and then 12 months, a year and a half later, you get no more tax-free lump sums. And so you can start to put that money back into a pension and never fall foul of the recycling rules because you're not taking out or not getting £7,500 out tax-free in any 12 months previously. So you can start a new pension whilst you're taking out a money out of another pension. Yeah. But beware you don't break the recycling rules. And that easiest one not to break is that 7500 in the last 12 months. As a taxpayer, you can put in up to 4000 reduced because you started taking money out of a pension. That is, you put in 3200 and the government puts in what the tax would have been, that £800. That makes you 4000 As a non-taxpayer, if you don't have actually get into the point where you're paying income tax, if your income tax is all below, if your income is all below the personal allowance, that's twelve thousand five hundred this year, then you can still put in two thousand eight hundred eighty, and that's topped up by seven hundred twenty pounds worth of tax, making the pension fund three thousand six hundred. What this means is that you can actually start off with less because as you take some out, you're putting it back in, and you're getting that tax refund boost. So let's give an example of someone who needs twenty thousand pounds a year. In this example, we're saying that the person needs 20,000 a year in their pocket. Now the maths on this is a little complex because as you take more out, the tax-free portion also gets larger. So it's not as simple as taking out 20,000 plus the 20% tax. Also, bear in mind that we also want to have 3,200 to put back into a pension, new pension fund. So after tax, we need to have 23,200. And talking of tax, we have to take into account that we have a personal allowance that doesn't get taxed, currently 12,500. I'm afraid I'm going to ask you just to trust the next program for the moment because the math starts to get tricky. To afford that, we need to take out £24,353 from the pension. The extra £4,353 is to allow us to put 3200 into the new pension 
and pay £1,153 as income tax. However, this is the clever bit, of that income tax, the government instantly gives us back £800 as tax relief to the new pension. So in effect, out of that 24000 we in effect pay just £353 in income tax. Why do this, I hear you ask? Why have we paid the income tax only for it to be put back? How does that help? Why not just leave it in the pension? Well, it helps because it increases the amount we get tax-free, that 25% tax-free amount on each withdrawal. That 4000 that would have lost £800 in income tax has been put back into the pension fund. Then it's taken out again. And when it's taken out again, we don't get charged income tax on all of it, only on 75% of it. So that £4,000 tax isn't taxed at 4000 it's only taxed on 3000 which means we've gained £200 just by putting it back into a pension. And over five years, what that means is you're going to get an extra £1,000. This is why there are rules to stop people recycling pensions and overusing this technique. Before I finish, let me just remind you that I am not a financial expert or an advisor. I and don't forget that laws and tax rules that were in place when I created this video may well have changed. This is just one way you may consider bridging any gap between your minimum pension age, 55 at the moment but set to rise, and when you want to take your pension. I would strongly advise anyone considering how to find out such a gap to seek the advice of a regulated financial advisor. But certainly use what I have put here and on my other videos so that you can ask them the right questions. Good luck to you in your retirement.